Wonderful. Good afternoon and welcome again to Bloomerang Academy. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Diana Otero and I'm the Product Engagement Manager at Bloomerang. You might recognize me from attending our Bloomerang Academy classes or listening to our help and release videos. Today, we are sharing a Bloomerang case study that explores full system automation with MIB agents. I am so excited for this topic and I would like to introduce our presenter today, Jesse Gilchrist. Jesse is a Zapier certified expert and Bloomerang integrations consultant at Sidekick Solutions. Sidekick Solutions is a partner of Bloomerang, specializing in system automations for Bloomerang, and has been a Bloomerang user since 2013, and most recently was part of the Bloomerang team that launched the Bloomerang Zapier app. We're excited to have Jessie here today to share her expertise and explore how integrations with Bloomerang can take your fundraising efforts and donor cultivation to the next level. Welcome, Jessie. Thanks, Diana. Thank you so much. I am so excited for today's webinar. We have so much great content for you today. And this is one that I think can really help your organization think about how you're going to take your fundraising and the apps that you're using to the next level. So as integration consultants, we often get asked how integrations work in real settings with real organizations in a day-to-day -day scenario. So to illustrate how Bloomerang remains the core central system in your organization's tech stack and your fundraising strategy, we want to share the story of how MIB agents accomplished full system automation. So many organizations say that the thought of integrating other apps with Bloomerang feels overwhelming or maybe even unattainable. And our hope is that by the end of our webinar today, you'll see how one organization was able to successfully implement automations across the organization and attain some pretty significant outcomes that further their mission and align with their goals. So today we're gonna to introduce MIB agents and the challenges they were facing that led them to exploring automation. We're gonna talk about the solutions they deployed, the fun part is we're going to share the outcomes they've experienced since integrating their tech stack. And then we're going to talk a little bit about their future vision as they explore other automation opportunities. So let's start by talking about MIB Agents. So MIB Agents is a leading pediatric osteosarcoma nonprofit dedicated to making it better for their community of patients, caregivers, doctors, and researchers with the goal of less toxic, more effective treatments and a cure for this aggressive bone cancer. The work that MIB agents performs is widespread and impactful. It encompasses three main areas of focus being funding necessary research, providing education, and then offering patient support programs. So instead of me talking about these programs, I actually want to share a short video showcasing some of the programs MIB agents provides to the osteosarcoma community. It's important to have this short video because this is background for some of the solutions we've put in place and then also some of the outcomes that they've seen. So we're going to go ahead and switch over to a video here and we'll watch this quickly. I think that I wish that I would have known that it's okay to talk about things for a long time. I really tried to convince myself that I didn't have any emotions and this wasn't bothering me and it was fine if I just kept everything to myself. MIB Agents has support programs to make sure that nobody walks alone through osteosarcoma. Ambassador Agents are trained and certified peer visitors. There are the people that are surviving osteosarcoma and who are willing to share their stories with the newly diagnosed, those actively in treatment, and those in recovery. MIB Agent Gamers is an online gaming community that connects those affected by osteosarcoma. We additionally are a forum composed of MIB trained agents who are eager to act as guides through difficult times. Warrior Mail is a really special program at MIB Agents. We have writer agents who once a month sit down 
and write letters that connect them with the warriors. Missions are undertaken when all curative treatment options have been exhausted for a child. Missions allow the osteosarcoma community to truly come together to build an experience worthy of that child. The Prayer Agent Program is designed to provide spiritual support to anyone affected by osteosarcoma. Our amazing and dedicated prayer team is available to receive your urgent or ongoing prayer requests for your Osteo Warrior or Osteo Angel. Healing Hearts is a program that was created for bereaved osteosarcoma parents by bereaved osteosarcoma parents. When you lose a child to cancer, you really can't connect with the rest of the world for a long time. And you need a community that you know will love you, will support you, and will understand you. MIB is a whole community that can relate to what families facing osteosarcoma are going through. And because of this, it puts us in the best position to make it better for everybody affected by osteosarcoma. to our slides here. So now that you have a sense of the work MIB Agents does, let's talk about their journey to full system automation. Only two years ago, MIB Agents was managing their constituent and fundraising data and spreadsheets. They were experiencing a growing inability to find the information they needed or successfully perform outreach to their community. And I think this is a common pain point for a lot of organizations. They had the data they needed, but it was messy and unusable. As we can all probably agree, trying to maintain spreadsheets of donor and fundraising data can quickly become a full-time job. MIB agents estimated that they were spending about 10 to 12 hours per week managing their data files, and it never seemed to be enough. They also wanted to improve their outreach to and engagement with members of, with members of the osteosarcoma community. This included not only more touches with community members, but also finding solutions to increase engagement with MIB agents' outreach. To sum it up, they needed to scale and wanted to do more with less resources. This led them to begin exploring options for a donor database. And as they explored solutions in the marketplace, they came across Bloomerang and were drawn in by its ability to integrate with other apps. At the time MIB agents migrated to Bloomerang, the organization wasn't using any other app to support its fundraising or donor cultivation activities, but this didn't last very long. Now, the approach that MIB agents took to adding new tools to its tech stack is special. When identifying new tools to add to their Bloomerang ecosystem, they didn't go out and search for a new tool and then adapt their workflow to fit that solution. Instead, they really focused on their mission, their strategic plan, and organizational goals, allowing real use cases to drive the adoption of new technology. They started by identifying a use case, confirming its alignment with their organization's goals, and then defining the experience they want their constituents or end users to have. Only then did they go to the marketplace to find the tool that best fit their needs. And they did this prioritizing tools that were integration friendly. And this is where Bloomerang's ability to talk to other apps comes into play. It is easy to say that Bloomerang has really positioned itself as the most integration friendly donor database in the marketplace. And when we talk about Bloomerang integrations, there are two types that we should differentiate between, native and custom. Native integrations are often called direct integrations and are built within the Bloomerang database. These are often the most user-friendly form of integration and offered a standardized sync of data between two systems. They're also included in your Bloomerang subscription. We would consider these templated integrations, meaning that there is a set structure, while it allows for some customization, um, it doesn't allow for full customization of the sync. So native integrations available in Bloomerang include Fundraise Up, Donor Search, Give Butter, MailChimp, QuickBooks Online, and the list goes on. 
The other option for integrating with Bloomerang is by setting up a custom integration using the Bloomerang app in Zapier. Zapier is software that enables additional Bloomerang integration and fundraising opportunities. It's a middleware that sits between your Bloomerang database and other apps, helping them talk to each other. Really at its core, Zapier is automation software. And with Zapier, you can build one integration or many around your Bloomerang database, automating hundreds of tasks and supporting multiple things all on a single platform. So why get excited about Bloomerang and Zapier integrations? And there's three primary reason, reasons that we wanna to touch on about how custom integrations with Zapier can be so powerful. First and most importantly is that Zapier connects to over 3000 other apps. So any app that is in Zapier's directory, which you can get to by going to zapier.com slash apps, can be integrated with Bloomerang. And so this really extends the boundaries of your Bloomerang database as many apps your organization may be using are not natively integrated with Bloomerang, but could be integrated using Zapier. Also, if a native integration in Bloomerang doesn't meet your organization's use case, Zapier can also be used to design and deploy a similar, more customized version of that native integration. The second reason why Zapier is so powerful is because anyone can build integrations. You don't need to know how to code to build Zaps or workflows. Anyone can build and maintain an integration in Zapier. And then last, Zapier really enables custom integrations. You aren't limited to a one-size-fits-all workflow mapping or formatting. You truly can build an integration that's perfect for your organization and meets your use case. And flexibility is especially important because every organization's fundraising strategy and needs are different. So we'd like to do a quick poll to see how many of you are using Bloomerang integrations currently. So let us know if you're using both native and Zapier integrations, native integrations only, Zapier integrations only, or perhaps you haven't explored integrations yet. Thanks, Jesse, and thanks everyone. So far, it looks like 37% of our attendees today have not explored integrations. 32% um, have not explored integrations yet, or this is the first time they're hearing about it. We have 23% have native integrations, 3% have Zapier integrations, and 7% have both native and Zapier integrations. Perfect. Thanks, Diana. So integration sounds like it's new for a lot of you. Um, so some of the things we're going to showcase today, hopefully we'll get those imagination and creative juices flowing of what apps you're using at your organization and how you could potentially integrate them. So as MIB agents began pursuing new tools to support its fundraising and donor cultivation, retention, and even stewardship efforts, it implemented a combination of both native and custom Zapier integrations to automate the sync of data across apps in its tech stack. So here is a diagram showing the apps MIB agents have integrated with Bloomerang and the type of integration. So as you can see, fundraise up, and QuickBooks Online are native integrations. Those are both in green. Then we have Shopify, Webflow Forms, MailChimp, and Bonjuro, which are all Zapier native integrations. And then there are also other tools they're using that right now are a manual process to get that data into Bloomerang. So either imports or manual data entry. Now for these native and Zapier integrations, I wanna take a minute and talk through the use case for each of these a little bit. So we're gonna start with the native integrations and we're only going to give a brief overview of these as they're well-documented in Bloomerang's Help Center and are also showcased in other Bloomerang Academy classes. So the first one we're gonna tackle is Fundraise Up. 
MIB Agents was actually able to successfully set up this integration before engaging Sidekick Solutions in the beginning of 2001, or sorry, 2021. Bloomerang's native Fundraise Up integration syncs donors, donations, and recurring donation plans from Fundraise Up to Bloomerang in real time. The native Bloomerang integration with Fundraise Up allows you to customize the mapping for Fundraise Up campaigns, funds, designations, and custom fields. But alternatively, it also offers auto mapping if you don't want to explore any customization. For MIB agents, the native integration between Fundraise Up and Bloomerang truly supported their use case. Had this been different, MIB agents could have explored a custom integration with Zapier as Fundraise Up offers a Zapier app that can be connected to Bloomerang. Now, the beauty of connecting Fundraise Up to Bloomerang is that it not only syncs these donors and donations into Bloomerang, but you can see here that it also then syncs that data from Bloomerang to QuickBooks Online. So QuickBooks Online is the other native integration MIB Agents utilizes. With the Bloomerang QuickBooks integration, you can start and end your transaction entry in Bloomerang, meaning you don't have to do any more double data entry. Syncing donations from your donor database like Bloomerang to your accounting platform, for example, QuickBooks Online, is one of the number one ways to save time and resources, as well as ensure your systems are reconciled. So Bloomerang has designed its native integration to allow you to define custom mapping rules for the QuickBooks Online account, product, service, and class using the fund campaign appeal transaction type or method in Bloomerang as the criteria. So the ability to customize the mapping rules really makes this integration flexible and ensures that you have a successful translation of your fundraising codes in Bloomerang to your accounting codes in QuickBooks Online. Bloomerang's native QuickBooks Online integration is fairly robust and meets the needs of most organizations. But similar to Fundraise Up, if the native integration didn't meet MIB agents' use case, a custom integration could have been designed using Zapier, as QuickBooks Online also has a Zapier app. So now the fun part, let's turn to some of the custom Zapier integrations that were set up. The first one we're gonna talk about is Shopify. Many of you are likely familiar with Shopify or even use it at your organization. For those of you that haven't heard of it before, Shopify is an e-commerce platform and provides organizations with a pre-built solution for hosting an online store. So MIB agents adopted Shopify in 2020, but hadn't really taken any steps to promote their online store. And this was partly due to the fact that the organization still was getting up and running with Bloomerang, and also because Shopify was not integrated with Bloomerang. When we implemented MIB agents' Shopify integration, we did this in tandem with the QuickBooks Online integration. And the reason why we did this is because in Shopify, there are three different revenue streams or transaction streams that can come in. We have our item purchases, our shipping, and our tax. And so these may need to be coded differently in Bloomerang in order to ultimately code these transaction types differently in QuickBooks Online. So their integration was designed to sync customers to Bloomerang and create separate donations for item purchases, shipping, and tax. And the reason why we did this was so that we could code the fund campaign and appeal differently in Bloomerang for the different types. So if it was an item purchase, shipping, or tax, they were coded differently, which then resulted in different accounting codes in QuickBooks Online. We also developed the solution so that the item that was purchased could result in a different fund campaign or appeal coding, which makes the solution scalable as they can define the fund campaign or appeal that should be assigned in Bloomerang for each new product that's added to their Shopify store. In addition to its online store with Shopify, MIB Agents also uses Webflow for its website hosting and online forms. 
So none of these forms collect donations, but rather they support MIB agents' education and support programs by facilitating engagement with the osteosarcoma community. MIB agents had 16 Webflow forms that needed to integrate with Bloomerang. And not only did the automations need to find or create constituent records for the submitter, they also needed to create interactions to record the form submission and update the Bloomerang constituent to capture new contact information submitted through the form. In some instances, the form collected or the form itself even collected information for multiple constituents. For example, a patient or a warrior fighting osteosarcoma and their parents. So the automation was designed to ensure that each of these individuals was added to Bloomerang with an interaction on their timeline for that form submission. Now the full transcript of the form submission was written to the note on the interaction. While key data fields that MIB agents might need for segmentation or reporting were mapped to custom fields to support that, for, that filtering and Bloomerang's reporting utility. In total, this project resulted in 23 different workflows across the 16 forms. And some of those forms and those workflows also were integrated with another tool that MIB agents uses called Bonjuro. Bonjuro is an engagement tool that enables organizations to send personalized videos to constituents. MIB agents hadn't begun using Bonjuro yet, but they really had a clear vision for how they wanted to use the platform in the initial use cases they wanted to integrate. The first automations we tackled when integrating with Bonjuro were to create tasks for follow-up when a constituent became a new donor, became a recurring donor, or made a donation over $150. So with Zapier, we were able to config configure these automations with ease and MIB agents dove right in to begin acknowledging constituents through this new communication avenue. Now, once we saw the success of those three initial workflows, when we then were configuring the Webflow forms, MIB agents identified two additional use cases for sending personalized messages. Now, these two use cases are a programmatic follow-up with constituents, not a fundraising outreach. The impact of these workflows has been immense, and we'll touch on this in a bit more when we discuss the outcomes that MIB agents has experienced. Now, I wanted to end by talking about MailChimp, as it's the integration that MIB agents has set up for MailChimp is unique and utilizes a few different means for integration. For many organizations, the native Bloomerang integration with MailChimp will meet their needs and use case. The decision for using Zapier and not the native MailChimp integration comes down to the type of emails MIB agents wanted to send out a MailChimp. Specifically, MIB agents wanted certain donor activity or lack of activity to automatically trigger an email series in MailChimp. And this could only be accomplished with Zapier automation. So to date, there are four different email series that MIB agents is currently sending out a MailChimp and the number of emails in each of these series ranges from six to 12 emails. So they have a new donor welcome series, a recurring donor acknowledgement, and then a lapsed one year and a lapsed two year recapture series. The lapsed donor recapture series are even more unique than a simple Zapier automation as they use another automation tool called Mail Parser. Now, Mail Parser is a parsing tool that is often used in Bloomerang automations when the triggers in Bloomerang's Zapier app or the API are not sufficient for the use case. So in this case for MIB agents, they had complex criteria for when a donor was considered lapsed and specifically wanted to exclude different categories of donors or major donors from getting a lapsed donor recapture email. In order to account for all of these different pieces of criteria, complex reports were designed in Bloomerang and scheduled to send to the parsing tool, which then triggered a Zapier automation and therefore created or sent that email series to that subscriber in MailChimp. 
Now, if this use case for the MailChimp piece here feels advanced, it's because it is. Extensive discovery, discussion, and testing were performed to ensure that the solution met not only MIB agents' use case before it was deployed, but also was really capturing all aspects of their use case. So for example, their new donor welcome series um, has on the, the second half of the series, the last six emails, are actually geared towards converting donors to become recurring donors. So in designing those emails in that series, we actually added a feature that would drop the subscriber or the constituent out of getting additional emails if they were successfully converted to a recurring donor. So lots of discovery together with MIB agents to design not only the automations, but the email series that met the use case and the experience they were hoping to deliver for their constituents. Now, at this point, you may be wondering how much time and investment it took to take MIB agents from a spreadsheet-based organization to the full system automation we've outlined today. So here are some metrics to provide the scope for implementing these solutions. Now, the implementation timeline for MIB agents is ongoing. MIB agents began partnering with Sidekick Solutions to configure the solutions that we've talked through today in January, and the relationship is continuing to this day. More on this here in a minute. Now, MIB agents dedicated internally about four to five hours of internal resource per automation. Their implementation costs in quarter one and quarter two of 2021 were $9,000. And we anticipate about three to $5,000 for quarters three and four as we refine and expand their existing solutions, as well as exploring new automations. Now, in addition to just general licenses for the applications that they're using, MIB agents pays $290 a year for MailParser and $500 a year for Zapier. So that's about $790 a year for automation tools. Now, all of this together puts MIB agents' total automation costs for 2021 at a little under $13,000. Now, that includes both implementation costs and the cost for automation tools. Now, I'd, what I'd like to do now is introduce Liz. She is the Director of Operations at MIB Agents. And I've asked Liz to hop on the webinar and share in her own words what MIB Agents' experience was implementing these automations over the past year, what they've learned, and kind of share her experience with you so that you can get a sense of what you could expect if you wanted to explore full system automation. Thank you so much, Jesse. I'm so glad to be here tonight. Um, our discovery of Zapier and native integrations have truly been a game changers, uh, game changer for us at MIB Agents. We have built our suite of programs and automations over the last nine to 10 months and feel like we've really transitioned from spending most of our time on data management and organization and kind of those menial tasks that really just need to get done to finally spending our time um, truly making it better. And that's what MIB stands for um, and making it better for our community and achieving our mission. We've learned a few lessons along the way. Um, first, we needed to find the best products and partners for our specific needs. We have used kind of a cross-functional team that consisted of finance people, operations people, development, marketing, and programs for kind of different aspects of our automation journey. Um, our great partner, Sidekick, helped us with our automations. And our accounting partner, Blue Fox, has been heavily involved with helping us set up our programs. It'll sustain us through our future growth. We had to not only find these partners, but kind of build in our budget um, that maintaining those partnerships so that we could see these through and really help um, have them help us grow um, to the next level. 
The second lesson we learned along the way is one person in the team really needs to take ownership of managing all of the programs, the maintenance and the debugging that is natural in this process. Um, these automations will greatly increase your efficiency, the impact you make, the, the cleanliness of your data, but they do require someone to kind of watch over them and debug them occasionally. So it does require that kind of person in your team that, that can do that. We've identified kind of four um, really great things about our journey. Um, first, um, we are building an infrastructure that will scale easily as we grow and develop. And we're growing pretty fast and all of these automations are helping us scale that. The frustrations we are constantly dealing with um, by not finding current constituent data, not having that information easy at hand has been dramatically decreased and that has been incredible. Um, the third great thing about our journey is our team finally has the space and time to work on the really important projects and personalized communication that we've always wanted to have and never could get enough time to do. And our community has really seen the results. They are engaging more in programs, donating significantly more. We've seen what these automations have done to our community and how much more we have been able to do. And it's been honestly amazing. Of course, this all ha hasn't come without some of the challenges. And the two biggest ones are that first, we really had to trust that spending money on these systems would help us further our mission. As a nonprofit, we must be good stewards of our donors' money, and therefore we really struggle to spend money unless it's toward direct programs. And we really had to take that leap of faith that this expense would help us achieve our mission. In the beginning, we had a small list of automation needs. Um, and as we've seen the power of these first automations, We've added on more projects and more automation building because we are seeing the dividends for our community tenfold. And that has been really fantastic. The second kind of challenge we've identified is that the roles within our team really needed to change. Um, the majority of our work used to be very routine routine and basic. And now our team is able to spend the majority of our time on strategic planning and higher level leadership needs. And that has been fantastic, but obviously takes a change in mindset. So we've been really excited about um, what it has done for us and are so thankful to Bloomerang and Zapier and Sidekick for helping us along the way. Thanks, Liz. That's everything you said, I think is, is very spot on with the experience that a lot of the organizations we've helped automate solutions has been. Um, especially the piece you said about trusting that the money you are investing to create the infrastructure and the automations will, you know, kind of going off of that faith that it will support your organization and further your mission, I think is a very common concern for nonprofits. And so to hear that you've seen the dividends from that is, is great. And now we're going to talk about that, which is the fun part. So we want to share some of the outcomes that MIB agents has experienced since implementing these automations and leveraging Bloomerang as its donor database. Now these are real metrics. So these are tangible, real, and I think with us, you will see the impact that these have had on MIB agents furthering their mission. So since we implemented these solutions at the start of 2021, MIB agents has seen an increase in new recurring donors by 63% in actually the last six months alone. 
They have seen an increase in donor retention by 13% as a result of cleaner data and better communication with their community. In six months, their email open rate has increased by 5%. Their click-through rate has increased by 12%. And unsubscribe requests have gone down by 29%. Now, they've also increased the number of constituents in their community by 10%. They've added additional capabilities to further their missions without increasing resource costs. And what this means is that they're only spending on average one hour per week and another five hours per quarter managing their data in Bloomerang. So instead of the 10 to 12 hours per week they were spending, that's down to one hour per week. And they've also experienced consistent and more personalized outreach with members in the osteosarcoma community and are able to engage with them more frequently. So we anticipate these outcomes to continue growing as these solutions are expanded and more automations are added to support the work MIB Agents does. Now there's one other outcome that we wanna share with you. And this outcome, really represents the core of MIB Agents' mission. And I want to ask Liz to hop back on and share this as personally, I feel this is one of the most impactful outcomes MIB Agents has experienced. And for mission-based organizations, really drives home the power of automation beyond kind of the hard metrics of dollars and cents or retention rate. Um, so Liz, I'd love for you to share the other outcome that you've experienced. Absolutely. Um, when we started the automation journey, we, we weren't really certain about all of the options or possibilities that, that automation could give us. Through our work, our list of ways that automation can assist us has really grown dramatically. And we started with the idea that automation can help us clean up our data and keep our data current. And it really does do that, but it does so much more. Um, in our patient support programs, we have found barriers for participation or involvement. And we've begun to look at automations as a way to help us lower that barrier. One example is our program called Gamer Agents. And you heard about it in the video. To understand this program, you need to know that osteosarcoma is diagnosed most often in kids aged 10 to 16 and leaves kids with really battered immune systems, often unable to attend school for almost a year or more, and legs or arms that are full of metal or missing altogether due to amputation. Therefore, a once really active teen or young adult is suddenly not able to participate in activities as they did before osteosarcoma. And video gaming becomes many kids' social outlet at that point. Gamer Agents is a group of trained um, older teen and young adult volunteers that have been impacted by osteosarcoma, and they play video games with kids that are currently fighting osteosarcoma on a private and safe server. We have found that once kids become involved, they absolutely love it, and they're on there all the time. And if you have a teen at home, you probably understand that. Um, they find that they've got so much in common and they really feel understood and accepted, unlike most of the rest of their interactions in the real world. The main barrier is getting a teenage kid to give it a try. Often their parents or their um, nurses or social workers see the need and the opportunity for gamer agents and the teenager kind of does what they do best and really push back the adults and say, I don't need that. I don't want that. So we built an automation about five months ago to send out a set of videos from the main gamer agent volunteers. And these volunteers are super fun, cool, down to earth teens and young adults um, that have been impacted by osteosarcoma. 
And seeing and hearing from these kids breaks down that barrier of them not wanting to join. Since beginning this automation, our gamer agent group and activity has doubled in numbers at least. We are able to lower that barrier for participation with this automation. And these kids fighting osteosarcoma have found a place of belonging. It truly is making it better. Our views on the benefits and types of automations have really evolved dramatically, and we couldn't be happier with the benefits we have discovered from using the automations from anywhere from our donors to our programs and our patient support. So, Jesse, back to you. Thank you so much, Liz. I think, and I appreciate you sharing that outcome you know, more than some of the other ones we've shared that you've given us permission to share, because I think it is so important and impactful um, to, to be able to showcase that automations are not simply about, you know, increasing revenue and retention and, and fundraising metrics, and they absolutely do that. But I think it's a great example that automation can also support the mission and programs that your organization is deploying. And you know, sharing with your community that I think it really um, you know, opens and shows, sheds light on how widespread the outcomes of automation can be. Yeah, so, I, I think one thing I'd like yeah, to add, ahead. if you don't mind, like people think of automations as like depersonalized and really kind of like hands off. But honestly, um, through what we've done with Sidekick, I think they're more personal. And, and that's just like a weird thing to think about, but it's, it's allowed us a much more personal touch. And I really think that's made a difference. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, obviously MIB agents, you all have heard here, everything they've done so far this year, and it's only August. Um, but their journey to full system automation isn't over. As more use cases require automation or other apps are added to MIB agents' tech stack, we intend to continue improving and expanding the solutions integrated with their Bloomerang database. So already we have a backlog of additional workflows and use cases we intend to solve for over the coming months and years. And this includes additional workflow, workflows around the apps they're currently using, and also exploring solutions to meet new use cases. So here's just a taste of the solutions we have in the queue for MIB agents. We want to automate the fulfillment and reorder process for osteosarcoma resources um, that are requested through their website. So this is typically by healthcare providers or patients and families. We want to develop more automation email series and MailChimp for other community segments create more Bonjero workflows for targeted follow-up and acknowledgement based on giving to what are called their family funds. We want to increase engagement with other osteosarcoma community members, such as patients, families, and doctors. We want to increase engagement with and outreach to MIB agents' volunteer base. We want to identify solutions to integrate other fundraising platforms they're using such as 32 auctions and run sign up. And then MIB agents also has a goal of deploying mass text communications in the upcoming year. And so we wanna find a way to support and automate that and integrate it with their Bloomerang database. Now to wrap up today's webinar, I wanna leave you with a few thoughts on the power of integrations with Bloomerang and the, the journey of attaining full system automation. When we think about full system automation, it's helpful to think of it as stacking bricks. Once you have one automation in place, you level up to the next layer and so on. Now, while the graphic on the screen may look a little bit complex, it's illustrating this approach and MIB agents without realizing it has adopted this approach to full system automation. They built a really solid foundation with Bloomerang as its donor database in the center of its tech stack. And this foundation is the springboard that's allowed them to iterate forward toward heavier automations across its tech stack 
and even iterate on existing integrations to take them to the next level as their use case evolves. Now we believe that Bloomerang should be your central system and integration should supplement your Bloomerang database. So automation should start from lens that Bloomerang is core to your donor management and fundraising technology. And if we look at MIB Agents' current tech stack, we can still see this illustrated beautifully. Bloomerang is at the center with data flowing into the system and out of it across all the apps they use to support their fundraising and organizational efforts. Native integrations, custom integrations using Zapier, these supplement and extend the power of Bloomerang. They don't replace it. So by automating tasks and the flow of data between these applications and the applications that your organization is using day to day, you can save time, resources, energy, and so much more. Allows you to spend less time performing data entry and data cleanup and more time focusing on your mission and cultivating donors. I wanna give a big thank you to Liz at MIB Agents for hopping on today and the entire MIB Agents team for allowing us to share your journey on this webinar. Um, it's been a pleasure sharing your journey and seeing you really strive for full system automation. And we hope that this has inspired you to explore how integrations could help your organization, not only with your fundraising efforts, but furthering your outreach to your community and to support of any programs that you deploy. Again, my name is Jesse, and my email is here. At Sidekick Solutions, our door is really always open. If you want to work with a consultant to set up a Bloomerang integration, or explore a use case, or talk through the apps you have in your tech stack, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. I'm gonna hand it off to Diana for a quick poll before we open up for any questions. Um, about any of the apps we've talked about today or MIB Agents' journey. Um, really any questions, integration or automation related, we're happy to answer. So Diana, I'm gonna hand it off to you. Thanks so much, Jesse. Before we get to the questions, um, we're going to launch a poll here and I'll leave it up as we're answering um, questions. If you have any questions, you can feel free to type them into the chat or the Q&A. Um, I was wondering um, for Jesse or Liz, do you have any advice for our friends here today who may feel overwhelmed and don't know where to start in terms of how to automate their processes? Absolutely. I think the best place to start is by having a conversation. Um, we really like to approach automation from the sense of your job is to have a well-defined use case, know what, you know what you're hoping to accomplish. And then our job at Sidekick Solutions or an integration consultant, our role is to help you identify the technical aspects of that. But I really would like to, you know, kind of shift a little bit. And Liz, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I would love to hear your take on, you know, what how you would, what guidance you would give to an organization in that position. Yeah, I think you're kind of right on, Jesse. Um, we started this thinking when you automate, you have to know what you're starting with and what you want to end with. And then it's just like this, this linking of the two in the middle. And it really shouldn't be. It's like you, you have to figure out what you want. We, we want these people to know this or we want to do this. And then it's, figuring out how to make it happen and what tools can help you do it. And I think that was a barrier we had to get past. We were looking at tools first and then figuring out what problems they could solve. And it's totally backwards. You have to look at the problem and then find the tool that best fits the, the problem or the thing you want to solve. Absolutely. Liz, you said it, said it better than I could have. 
That's wonderful. Thank you so much, Jesse and Liz as well. That's I know from our poll earlier that a lot of um, attendees that we have today haven't quite looked into integrations and automation yet. So it's always helpful um, to know where to start. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Any other questions or really um, for those of you that are still here on the webinar, if you have any questions about, again, specific apps that you're using, um, questions about the native integrations, questions about a use case, or again, any questions for Liz as well, either about how MIB agents, some of the programs and how they're approaching those, um, really anything's kind of on the table that you may have questions about. We do have a question, um, but I think it's a, I think it's a little bit more specific than we than we can get into today um, around um, recurring donations. Yeah, I see that one, Anna. We will follow up with you offline about your question. Um, so we'll go ahead and follow up with you um, via email after the webinar. Awesome. Great. Um, thank you again, um, Liz, for joining us today. I'm, I'm personally very excited with the future solutions that you have all lined up. What are you most excited about um, to start getting automated and you can, and where are you looking forward to spending that time and effort? I think the, the things that most excite me and I, I come at this from a kind of a program side, um, not a development side. So the, the things that really excite me is how do we communicate and how do we um, cultivate that kind of communication with our, our patient and family base. Um, so I, I think that is the thing that, that truly excites me. And we've just begun to start on that. Um, we've done a little bit with gamer agents and a few things like that, but we also are um, having the, the pipeline of our brains um, at this point because we haven't started putting it together, but um, putting together some automations that will help us extend that community with our um, medical uh, team members. So with all the doctors and social workers that work with our community of patients. And so um, really folding them into our community is something that I think will be really, um, really powerful. And I'm super excited to do next. That's awesome. And earlier you spoke a little bit about how, you know, it, it might seem counterintuitive. Automating something might seem less personal to donors, but from your experience, it's been quite the opposite. Can you speak a little bit more about that? Yeah, so a lot of these automations, they, they automate to, to help us get something done. So um, something comes into Bloomerang, so we get um, a, a patient signing up for our newsletter. It comes into our Bloomerang and then it goes into one of our systems like Bonjoro. And so then we get just like a little like tag, hey, this person needs a video. And because we aren't going through and finding all that information, it's automatically pulled over. All we do is spend like 30 seconds on Bonjoro just saying, hey, Diana, we saw that you signed up for the newsletter. We're so sorry that you um, have found yourself as part of the osteosarcoma community, but we welcome you and we want to help you in this, in this difficult time. And that opens the floodgates. Um, suddenly, you know, what took 30 seconds of a little video, but because it was personalized, that then person on the other end emails us back, calls us back, um, and it makes that dialogue very seamless. 
but all of our systems behind us have told us that this is a new member of our community. They saved all of the information in Bloomerang and sent us a little tag so that all we have to do is spend 30 seconds and it's completely um, personalized. And that's um, unbelievable um, that it has helped us do that in such a personal manner. That's wonderful. I love that. And just hearing about it makes it feel like they're truly part of a community and it takes that anonymity away. They aren't just dollars coming in. They're really part of your community. I love that. It has really been a game changer. And to, to say that this has happened in nine or 10 months is, is really amazing. And it's, it's because We've got these fantastic partners and fantastic programs supporting us. Um, it's just, it's been um, unbelievable. That's wonderful. I, I'm, all, I'm also amazed to, to see the progress that's been happening in just a short amount of time. And I'm very excited um, for what the future holds for MIV agents. Um, before we, uh, we have another question here from Kate. Did MIB agents have any existing data that had to be cleaned or converted in order to be sure these integrations worked? My org is just switching from our old database into Bloomerang, and there's a lot of old info to fix up. Yeah, <laughs> cleaning up data is painful, um, but it, it really is, is part of the process. Um, because we've got these automations, they, they kind of do some self-cleaning and that has been really helpful. Um, Steven, did you wanna add something here? Oh, Liz, uh, Steven is the overarching Bloomerang host. So um, Diana ah. just flagged that it was answered live, that you're answering it live. Oh, okay. <laughs> Excellent. Um, yeah, so, so some of it had to be cleaned up and it took us a while to clean, clean up the parts of it ourselves, but we could do it a bit piecemeal. And then the nice thing with the automations that we have put into place is that when any new data comes in, it kind of helps us clean the old data. And so then the old data um, gets saved, but it goes to like a, um, an email number two or an address number two. And so the automations have helped us clean up our data that was maybe not as clean as, as we would have liked to begin with. Wonderful, thank you, Liz. Um, as we're making time for just any other last minute questions, Jesse, before we end, do you have any parting words for our friends today? I think the best parting words, I mean, Liz has, has said it all so beautifully already. The best parting words I can really say is that the, the feelings of overwhelm or that automations are unattainable is simply because it's new automations are new to the nonprofit world in the last couple of years. And so it's, it's a new concept for nonprofits, whereas for-profit companies have been you know, leveraging the power of automations for many years before. So my only encouragement would be, you know, try not to let those, the fear of it being unattainable or that it's a little too overwhelming, stop you from exploring what automations could be possible or how automations could help you further your mission. Because um, once you get past that barrier, as Liz has shared, new doors open and it's amazing what you can do to help further the work that you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Absolutely. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you, Liz. Um, thank you everyone for joining us today. We at Bloomerang are very excited for the extended capabilities possible with both native and custom Zapier integrations. We're very excited to see where all of you will take it and 
especially since Zapier enables integrations with over 3,000 different, different apps, and we've only just scratched the surface of what you can do with Bloomerang in Zapier. We hope you can find a way to automate your processes and work better with Bloomerang. In the meantime, thank you so much again for joining us today. We hope all of you have a wonderful day ahead and week ahead, and we hope to see you in another Academy class soon. Bye.